All right, before we start today's show, a reminder, uh, in case you didn't know, it is draft season, which means the 2024 what? Fantasy Football Draft Kit, the UDK, it's out. It's got our tier-based rankings, premium stat projections, 100-plus player profile videos, and don't forget about the custom cheat sheets where you can print them, you can integrate them with your league, you can mark players, you've got sleepers, breakouts, busts, and values, you've got custom scoring support, consistency charts, and so much more. The most trusted resource to win at your draft, available now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> That's, uh, you know. Is that the anesthesia? I guess. <laughs> I felt fine. I I don't know what that was. It sounded fine. Sure, oh, sure. Yeah. It's a really good start. Did you hit your mute button along the way? Um, possible on this side of the desk. Um, welcome in to the fantasy footballers. I, you know, I heard that it was hotter than oh. the devil's butt crack in here yesterday, it and I certainly I just, was. I just noped out. Nature's you, pocket. I can't. <laughs> I can't believe that you get to miss one show and it was when the AC goes out. Yeah, I, I was I was fighting, thought about uh, giving it a go yesterday, just got done with some uh, dental surgery because that's my life now. <laughs> and um, and then I was like, you know, I probably shouldn't do that. And then all of a sudden these Slack messages come in and it's, uh, the air conditioning's not working. <laughs> and then our team scurrying onto the roof, saving the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and then my expectations immediately, anytime I miss a show, it goes, I knew, I knew we had a new segment, which mm-hmm. was awesome. The ready to roll segment, talking about the red zone opportunities, you know, the change in defenses down there, really enjoyable. Then I knew we had news to talk about. And then I knew you guys, you know, it's a mock draft episode Yeah. and left to your own devices. I expected three, four, five hour show. Yeah. So you did pretty, you did pretty good. And then I get in here today. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna keep it tight. We got way too much to do today. This is a massive show today. The fact that we're trying to get through as many wide receivers, we've got as much news as we have, oh. and we're going to be talking dynasty waivers. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a big episode. I feel like I could talk news for the whole show. Like All that's going on with Brandon Ayuk will be brought up, discussed, and now that we're every day, I mean, we'll probably have news during the show. We could, and... We could have it after the show, but we uh, we get to talk about all the rumors and implications. And I think the one thing not being talked about at all, Brock Purdy. And mm. how this affects Brock Purdy and the 49ers offense if Brandon Ayuk departs, which is sure. looking more and more likely. So, yeah, Jason mentioned it. We've got wide receiver rankings countdown on the show today, 20 through 11 on our consensus rankings, and then 10 through 1 tomorrow. The NFL news we just mentioned, and we've got a waiver wire dynasty uh, edition today to get into. Uh, I mentioned it at the top, the ultimate draft kit. You can get in there right now. Lots of updates over the last week. A lot of players to be thinking about as these initial depth charts come out. For some teams, it matters. For some teams, it it you hope it doesn't matter. Jason mentioned today, uh, Bo Nix. Quarterback three. Behind Zach Wilson on the depth chart. Behind, li- yeah. listen to that again. Behind yeah. Zach Wilson, yeah, yeah, yeah. that so, one, that one makes one hundred percent with the Sean coach, Payton. With the coach, yeah, staff. I know, I know. So it's like very oh, d- d- earn he, it. He's gonna earn it. You like he, he did? Didn't I tell you? You did earn it. You drafted him in the first round. I, have I been? Is this all private? Where I tell you Sean Payton sucks, or is that has it been public? I yet? think that's been mostly private. I don't yeah. think you've said that on the show. And I and I, you and I have a vast disagreement on that but you you don't like that dude <laughs> i just think he i think he's dennis allen with a ring you know what i mean i think he sucks i think when you get, and a netflix movie that's uh, even that existing <laughs> tells me what that man thinks about his the career dude was overseeing a team that people on his coaching staff maybe peyton was not involved but people under his coaching staff were offering money to players 
to hurt other NFL players, he gets suspended for, for a, a year. For a year, and then they're like, "Hey, let's turn this into a feel good feel good movie here," and ca right? and cast it very interestingly. <laughs> I mean, why isn't he coaching uh, at the NFL? Don't worry about that. He's helping out a bunch of ragtag kids right now. I know people like Sean Payton. I but, do. <laughs> but Drew Brees is, is in my opinion, the reason Sean Payton is so heralded. And, and Sean Payton has, you know, some people sniff their own farts. He's got a fart room, dude. He saves them <laughs> for years. He goes in there nightly it's, it's to take air, a whiff. It's airtight. Nothing oh. escapes that room. He, it's pressurized because yeah. he just keeps adding to it. Sean Goes Payton, in that room, adds a little bit of air. Yeah, no, Sean Payton was the Saints head coach oh, from 2006 man. through 2021. Uh, Breeze played for the Saints from 2006 to 2020. Huh. So, um, mm. you know, <laughs> until <laughs> so I, I, uh, I guess Payton on blast today. Yeah, I'm not saying I wouldn't have done it. Like if I'm Sean Payton, oh, and you're, and I, and I lost you my lose Drew Breeze, you, you get out. Oh, guys, it's just it's rough. I need a yeah. break. I need then, a break. I'll be I back. Don't know. I don't like him. Hey, it's opinions. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> let's jump into our new segment today. Welcome to the Waiver Wire, presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube TV. Well, we're kicking off the Waiver Wire segment early here in August before kickoff because... Because it's still open. It really is. And leading up to kickoff, You've got a lot of battles in training camp. You've got a lot of dynasty decisions to make. In fact, uh, I am often annoyed at the astuteness of, of course, uh, Al Borland on our, in our dynasty league to constantly be making little tweaks and little pickups, all of his own devices. And by that, you mean Kyle? Yes, his co-manager. Yes, I do. I who leads just, the way? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Th this is this is interesting. We're we're going to be talking about. A lot of the um, today, specifically, some of the running backs you should pay attention to in dynasty leagues that still might be on the waivers. Um, also, we have a uh, our dynasty show that comes out on Wednesdays. We're going to be talking about the nasty boys of summer on tomorrow's episode. So, if you want more of this, you'll get that um, tomorrow. But today, we're specifically looking about like the insurance running back uh, options out there in the dynasty leagues. Last year, if you don't remember, Kyron Williams. He was the backup. That's a backup, yeah. Yeah, you know, it was, it was Cam Akers. It was Cam Akers who was uh, the guy, and Kyron is, you know, nothing. And then and then, um, in week one, Cam Akers saw 22 opportunities. So it was like, yeah, this, that was, this is Cam Akers. And then he never never saw another snap. Kyron became a revelation. And so, yeah, so can we find this players, year's Kyron Williams? Yeah, players that have carved out roles in training camp and, and have an opportunity there. And so we're looking at, from a waiver wire perspective, insurance running back changes. That's it. I had no memory of of Acres getting that much work. Yeah, because week one, Kyron was awesome for fantasy football, but yeah, Cam Akers had yeah. twenty two attempts for twenty nine yards. It's I mean, one point three yards a carry. Kyle, you should dig up Cam Akers' ADP last year because he was. Oh, he was. A, I think he was a dead zone running back. So yeah, like four. Four to six or something. But I mean, there was a period of time of great excitement for Cam Akers mm -hmm. and the potential because you know what the system does. But um, there are other situations out there worth paying attention to. And so we're going to bring up a handful of running back names, Jason. You want to kick us off with one of them? Yeah. Here well, in the waiver wire segment. Yeah. If if you were watching um, the the Hard Knocks New York Giants, they have a little segment on Tyrone Tracy Jr., uh, rookie running back for. Really hit that the Giants. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the end of his name? That sounded like his class <laughs> in school. Yeah. Uh, he's a junior Tyrone for the New York Tracy. Giants. A junior? junior. Uh, he, he was a fifth-round pick, 166th overall, and he's an older prospect. They talked about this um, on that uh, on that episode. They, they, they discussed the fact that they saw that almost as a positive because they knew he would go later in the draft. He's got more experience. Um you know, he, he played six seasons in college. Not not many players get to say that. Uh, he was a former wide receiver, turned into a running back. So some of these things that were – We like that usually. We, we do. I mean, that's uh, – Antonio Gibson was a wide receiver turn. It was also uh, DJ. David – wasn't David Johnson a yes, wide receiver? David Johnson point? was a wide receiver turned running back. So this is the type of depth chart where last, uh, last episode I took Devin Singletary – 
because it was like there's there's no one there. Like it has to be Devin Singletary, but also that means if Devin Singletary gets injured or he's just not that good. Or, or Tracy just carves out a third down roll. That's, sure. what, that's what I see here is it's like Singletary's history. You know, we, we can say how well he played at the end of last year. He did not start the season as a starter. He's been beaten out by Zach Moss in Buffalo to be a starter. And, um, you know, what? what, what? I, was just, I was just left on. I was just – it was I was on solo cam for a long time oh. while you were talking. I'm like, why? Why is the camera on me? Yo, so I gotta you got season form back there. Yeah, put put Deucer's Alley on there and raise your hand if your name is Papa Josh. You don't hit that button because they won't do it. Yeah, all right. There so that you one's go. on Papa Josh. Yeah, well, the podcast <laughs> listeners. He's probably fine. putting in a waiver claim right now. Yeah, he's <laughs> distracted. Uh, but no, I mean Tracy has the opportunity to carve out a role. And it, honestly, if he took third downs away from Singletary, that would impact your your hopes and dreams for Singletary. But there's a couple other names worth mentioning as well. Daneric Prince, Mike. Yeah. Kansas Can City running back. There's no Jarek McKinnon in the picture right now. And Daneric Prince was a uh, former undrafted free agent. He sure was. Yeah, like he's, he's a speedster. Yeah, four four one. Uh, but he ran that at you know, like he's six foot, two hundred sixteen pounds, in which. Like two fifteen, honestly, to me, that's the that's the running back weight. Like if you get an elite player at that weight, it just seems to be the perfect match. Uh, and he has been running. Clyde edwards alaire came back, f former first round pick, and it was the presumption would be, well, okay, well Clyde will come back. He will be Pacheco's backup. That has not been the case, at least so far in training camp. It has been Prince and Clyde edwards alaire has been running with. The second team where Prince is getting run with the the ones, so he looks like he will be the back. I think Pacheco is going to be a true workhorse running back. I do too. So this is strictly an insurance policy, but this is a big time. You insurance need policy. an insurance policy on someone that runs the way that <laughs> Isaiah Pacheco runs. I mean, he is sometimes the ground pushes back. He is the cartoon into the wall. He's a brutal runner. And uh, he he's seen that. I mean, he shoulder labrum tear in 2022, a hand finger fracture in 23, uh, another shoulder injury, missed two games in 23, a head cranial concussion grade one. Like you know, this <laughs> it's what <laughs> I'm just I'm just reading the head cranial. Come on, man, just say concussion. I was just reading. Man. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> um, here here's the thing about. Kansas City, which is some, one of the reasons we love Andy Reid, is because he will play the best players. Isaiah Pacheco was not, you know, there. There, I think there were other teams that if Andy Reid's not the head coach, Clyde gets a lot longer run because of the draft sure. capital invested. Yeah. So they made the decision at one point in time to say, "Hey, Pacheco, you're going to, you're just going to usurp this guy that we spent a first round draft pick that you know that Patrick Mahomes loved." And so that's not to say that I think Prince would usurp Pacheco. It's just to say that. It's not a surprise to me on this roster that he's going to have more opportunities than he would on another roster, despite Clyde being there. And then people need to take this approach more. Like play, head coaches, play the better players. Play the better. Like look at look at Brock Purdy. You know what I mean? Brock Purdy was the the last pick in the in the draft where they had spent a ton of capital on Trey Lance, and they're just like, well, yeah, but he's better. That guy's better. I mean, it, Kirk. Kirk Cousins, uh, back in the day, uh, you know, getting to obviously an injury to to RG three, what started it, but then it was like he's good, he's a good quarterback. Like if you're a good player and you're showing out in <laughs> camp, like just be allowed. This to is the most start. like basic, yeah, common sense type. Yeah, but of it it's it's I will just the other side is it's not as easy as that because you the criticism that you will get by going with like if that player it's doesn't cost fouls if they don't have immediate success which Brock Purdy had immediate success so it's an easier transition but yeah like if you're seeing things in practice that oh this is the player who should go out but this is the player who was picked to go out there, there there's a lot of public stuff out there that it, that it is some coaches can handle it and some coaches are just like their their seat at the table is not secure enough that it's hard to like if you go to the owner and be like and say, "Well, we evaluated the process, and this seventh round pick is going to be the guy to go in." Your owner can get real big mad at you. And I, I want to, uh, I'm going to close this out real quick. Just throwing two names: Jordan Mason. Pay attention this, to this Jordan is Mason a in, big one in San Francisco, just because 
you know, they've been so committed to Elijah Mitchell as the backup, but recently Kyle Shanahan's talked about the fact that there's, you know, even though there's no fall off in Elijah, JP's running at a high level. We know Elijah Mitchell gets hurt all the time, and that is a high value running game. And then Isaac Garindo is really out of the picture at this point in time due to injury and the depth chart. In fact, I I, I spent a, a decent amount of offseason fab securing Isaac Isaac Garindo, and you know it's just depending on your roster and what's out there on the waiver mm-hmm. wire. I I am sitting there in the sunk cost fallacy with Garindo, going, well, I spent some offseason fab, but this guy is this guy's easily fourth on the depth chart, and it's not a depth chart that I'm you know expecting to get. I don't know. It, no, no, it's just it, it's a tough one. It's it, just a tough one. And then Trey Sermon, former Forty mm-hmm. er running back, who he, I spent a lot of yeah, on. yeah, a long time ago. So, um, but uh, Trey Sermon in Indianapolis looks like the backup to Jonathan Taylor, who's dealt with injury concerns. So yeah, he's the he's the clear number two there. They 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 lost uh, Zach Moss, who obviously had great success last year. They didn't go out and draft running backs. They didn't really replace anybody. And Trey Sermon has that. That job. So when you're when you're in a dynasty league, those guys shouldn't be on waivers. The backup running backs shouldn't be on waivers because when an injury happens, you should be looking at which roster was smart. And it's usually Brooks. Brooks with the backup running backs. He hoards the thing? backup running backs. Yeah. Yes, every time it's like, oh yes, let me go to the waiver wire. This injury, it's like ah. And Brooks. then it's title after title after title after title for you and I. But right. no, Brooks has zero. Uh, thanks again to NFL Sunday Ticket. On YouTube TV, watch every game every Sunday when you bundle NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. Sign up today at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers, local and national games on YouTube TV. NFL Sunday Ticket for out-of-market games excludes digital-only games. Device and content restrictions apply. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right. Are you not entertained? Here we go. If you're not <laughs> following the saga of Brandon Ayuk on Twitter, well, welcome to the saga because this this is a this is a fun time. Well, the teams they are circling. Brandon Ayuk has been given permission to negotiate new contracts. There are frameworks already agreed upon. This is all official reports that Brandon Ayuk has. Uh, or rather the 49ers. The teams Yes, have the 49ers have a framework of the compensation for a trade with both the Patriots and Browns, which is wild. Cleveland's deal, if Ayuk were to agree to a contract with Cleveland, would likely send Amari Cooper... It, it feels like it has to. Just... To San Francisco. Just cap-wise. And here, why I've been so much on the side of I don't think they trade Brandon Ayuk is... Because it doesn't make sense of if this team loses Brandon Ayuk, not that they don't have weapons left. Oh, it's damaging. It's, it's it's like your offense takes a huge hit, and you're trying to win the Super Bowl this year. So why, like, you control Brandon Ayuk's future? Why would you just trade him away? But if you're if you're making a move and you're getting Amari Cooper back, like, which his uh, Kylie pull up his contract because Cooper did just get a little bit more money, but his contract will be far more manageable than Brandon Ayuk. He didn't get more years. He just and, got more money. Okay, more more money. And, like, Cooper, I think Brandon Ayuk at this point is a better wide receiver, but it's still, if you get Amari Cooper and Debo, you're still in a very good place. So this trade makes total sense to me should Brandon Ayuk green light uh, whatever contract makes Cleveland's offering. sense for the 49ers. I can't imagine being a team – like if if I'm the Browns and yeah, I say I'm not I talking wanna, about the Browns, I'm talking if, about the 49ers. If I want to bring Ayuk in, I'm like, oh, dude, we've got we've got Amari Cooper and Najoku. If we bring Brandon Ayuk in, we can really have a, a rock solid offense. Mm. But it's like trading. I I don't think that Brandon Ayuk is so much better than Amari Cooper that it's also worth compensation because you're getting rid of draft picks to do this deal, more money. And then you're just replacing your wide receiver one with maybe a better wide receiver one, obviously a more youthful long-term wide receiver one. But this isn't a long-term move if you're giving away draft picks. On on that side, it makes no sense to oh, me. Oh wait, well, no. I mean, Cooper Cooper would be gone. Yeah, Cooper so, is a free agent. Next to me, year. it made, the, yeah. it, I'd rather have Brandon Ayuk than Amari Cooper if I'm the Browns. Yes, and it's a it's an investment in your long-term alpha. They spent the offseason money on Judy, who they believe in. 
There's been a lot a lot of, you want to talk about dynasty waiver wire buzz. I mean, Cedric Tillman has been the star of camp. Sure. I think they feel okay about that room, but, you know, you talk about other teams' commanders with Jaden Daniels. You've seen those calls and the rumors with uh, Brandon Ayuk. The Steelers have been involved. We don't have word that there's trade packages figured out there for compensation, but Brandon Ayuk will dictate some of this because he's going to tell – these teams, what kind of contract he's going to agree with? New England would be sending Kendrick Bourne, whatever. <laughs> uh, New England, New England is the, uh, I think the place that is a little bit terrifying. Sure. For Mike. Yeah. Uh, I feel like Mike has single-handedly <laughs> been responsible for Iuke's trade not being completed yet, because every time because they're offering me crap, you offering you, yeah. Yeah, Me like, personally, like, my dynasty squad. I feel like Mike is the ghost in Ayuk's <laughs> head, just not letting him feel comfortable with any of these trade destinations because you just invested in Ayuk in dynasty. And when you hear those four team names, if you are out there and you're thinking about, you know, Brandon Ayuk long term, where does the terror begin? I mean, if he goes to, if he goes to Pittsburgh, sure, let's run through him. If he goes to Pittsburgh, I'm I'm off the show. That's terrible. I'm I deceased. don't think so. You don't oh, think that's terrible? I'm deceased. Well, it's not good. There's there is but, there is not enough in Pittsburgh to go around with like I think George Pickens is good. I think Brandon Ayuk is better, but with what that team will want to be, I don't know that there's enough to I guess have I'm, both of them come through. It'd be really good for the Justin Fields as the starter world. Oh yeah. Because if he has Pickens and Ayuk and Fryermuth and Jalen Warren and then he's running the football. I mean, like if Justin Fields went we have not talked about this enough. If Justin Fields wins this job, which is becoming, you know, Russell can't play right now. Yeah. If so he wild. wins this job, because there's a report right now from Brooke Pryor from ESPN talking about it being more of a commit, uh, a competition than initially appeared. Um, if he wins that job, I just, I just want to make it so incredibly clear that Justin Fields goes from being an irrelevant player on draft day to potentially. More relevant than, in my opinion, even Anthony Richardson. Oh, to, to a league winner. To, to an potentially absolute a top league five winner. Wide, uh, quarterback. I mean, it, you know, we, we've talked about how, you know, Anthony Richardson in the fifth, Kyler Murray in the seventh, tenth round, Jaden Daniels. I mean, you add in the mobility of Justin Fields. And this is, again, why I think fantasy scoring is is broken and it's stupid that someone like Justin Fields, who might be able to beat this version of Russell Wilson, probably not, but maybe he's got a shot since Russell Wilson's got a calf strain, could come out and just win everybody fantasy football leagues because he runs so well and has 43% of his fantasy points. Talking about Justin yeah. Fields. 43% have, in his career, have come from rushing. But the And the truth is, and he outscores almost everybody. He, he has absolute... Top five. I mean, he he could be the number yeah. one quarterback. Uh, I don't think that his... that is impossible. No, I really it's, it's don't. Not insane. with big play guys like Ayuk and Pickens, who who made you know they made plays with really bad quarterback play already last year. Yeah. So did DJ Moore with yeah. really bad quarterback play from Justin Fields. Um, so, but so to lay it out for fantasy, honestly, let's say, and I'm going to take Justin Fields out of the equation. Just this year, if he goes to Cleveland and Amari Cooper goes back. I think that Brandon Ayuk will still be good. Like, if you believed in Omari Cooper for, for fantasy this year, you should believe at least equally uh, in Brandon Ayuk if he's the only guy in Cleveland. I think that he will be a, a top – he'll still be a top 20 guy uh, with a chance that with the investment of picks and money, they go all in and, and he becomes a true target dominator. Going to New England, that really, really sucks for this year. Long term, if Drake May hits, that could turn into a huge win, but this year it would be terrible. Uh, and same, and then Steelers is, I think, even long term is not great. All right. Um, we'll be paying attention with bated breath, and if Cooper doesn't go back to San Francisco, it, it doesn't help Brock Purdy. It, it, right. it might help your George Kittle like you guys were talking about, but it's not going to – you know, Purdy, you want the weapons. It's it's really funny. I'm glad you brought that up because I've thought a lot about Debo to the moon and yes. George Kittle, even above Kincaid, definitely to being the in those stars. top five. To, uh, I, I would say the the further the, one is the Debo. stars, yeah. Yeah, Debo the to the stars. pretty close. Kittle relatively. to the moon. All right, I think that's Kittle fair. to the satellites. Kittle's mm, uh, like Starlink? I don't yeah, know. That's, that's low orbit, man. 
That's yeah, we got to we got to get out uh, the outer orbit. The high high orbit. Yeah, like the, the asteroid belt at least. Where's the Tesla? Isn't there a Tesla in orbit? Which orbits that? Oh, you're talking about a car. Yeah, yeah they, uh, they did. They launched do that. a model. They S. did do that at one Into point. Space. It's in orbit right now. <laughs> um, but, but to bring it back home, I've been excited. <laughs> Uh, I've been excited Bring it about back to Earth. But yes. It, it, what uh, a random pull. <laughs> um, um, uh, Debo and Kittle are so exciting. If the targets go away from Brandon Ayuk, uh, the the numbers when Debo's on the field without Ayuk, they're outlandish. Uh, his yards per route run and stuff is just uh, mind boggling. But uh, it's a it's a real hit. It is a a very big downgrade for Brock Purdy, who's a pocket passer. If you don't have the extra deep threat, the big play touchdowns uh, available as readily. George, and then go ahead. George Kittle has averaged nearly eight targets a game when Ayuk is out. All right. We also have a quick uh, Jordan Addison update. We won't linger too long, but he's been charged with two misdemeanors for his July DUI arrest. Three game suspension is the NFL standard DUI policy. It could end up more. He has a hearing on October 7th. And um, that's it'll be very up in the air. Does that get pushed? Does he get a mid-season suspension? But yeah. expect at some point this year or next year, Jordan Addison will get at least a three-game suspension. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a break and come back with our wide receiver rankings countdown. All right, just checking in. We don't have more Brandon Ayuk news yet, right? Nothing yet. No more rumors. We're is Ayuk, our eyes up. Is Ayuk like tantalizing anything on what's the social media status of Ayuk's? Yeah, yeah. Any, does any, he have any, emojis out there? Has he been switching any of his pictures? Yeah, is he wearing another jersey? Yeah. <laughs> what's the colors of his most recent picture? I'm on it. Yeah, take a deep research here. Um, in the meantime, let's begin. Wide receivers. All right. It is time to look at our half PPR rankings at the wide receiver position. Um, you know, okay, his, uh, yeah, what's I the, see his last one is a, is a picture of him against the lions. So maybe the lions are in play. Ooh, you know, just throwing that out there or lions have mains. Okay. Maybe mm -hmm. his main team that he wants to go to. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going, going new England. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Let me know where he goes someday. Okay. All right. We are uh, we are looking at our twenty through eleven today, and uh, this will be fun. There's some discrepancy, quite a bit actually, starting at number twenty with Drake London. I've got him at twenty on the dot. That's where he ended up in our consensus because Jason's got him at twelve. Mike at twenty six. He's twenty three years old. I hate my ranking. I'm just letting you know that. You are um, morally opposed, or like it's just his. The that's where he fell in the projections, and it's not like a a gigantic gap point wise between him and say where Andy has him at twenty, and the upside is not. Which that's why we have an upside meter in the UDK because that is not reflected in my median projections. Yeah, I mean we're we're sitting in this stage with Drake London of excitement for the future, fear of a Garrett Wilson style letdown from last year where you came in with expectations that weren't delivered on because you haven't had it. And then you don't want him to become that perennial McLaurin DJ Moore of uh, uh, days of old. So I think there's some fear and I think that there's going to be a big variety of rankings on Drake London. I think that some people hearing, uh, you know, Jason at 12 might say it's a little aggressive, but I think there's other people that are going to say that's right where he belongs. ADP says that that's low. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will say that he is scary to rank there because he hasn't done it yet. Obviously, that's that's difficult. But when you look at the trifecta of, you know, the, the Garrett Wilson, Drake London, Chris Olave trio that was drafted together, they have looked great on the NFL field. They've done some stuff. There's a lot of excitement for them. And you have to say, well, what about the quarterback situation? I believe Drake London has the best quarterback of the three today. Now, we uh, Achilles injuries and coming back from them, uh, you know, maybe maybe he's not the same. Obviously, that's true for 
uh, Garrett Wilson's quarterback as well and Aaron Rodgers, and a lot of people will be like, wait, you think Cousins is better than Aaron Rodgers? I do at this point. I think the 40-year-old version of Aaron Rodgers is not going to be as good as Kirk Cousins. But if Kirk Cousins, if Drake London is very good at playing wide receiver, which he has looked on you know, the, the metrics that matter, the, the yards per route run in his career, he's 2.47 yards per route run in three wide receiver sets. That number is outstanding. If Kirk Cousins still has it, how does Drake London not finish in the top, you know, fifteen or uh, as a as a wide receiver sure. one? He he absolutely should. There's there's it's questions scary. about yeah. I mean, and you have some kind of um, jack of all trades players on this roster. Uh, Kyle Pitts is not a you know Kyle Pitts is an athlete that can be lined up and run down the field. B. John Robinson. Especially with Tyler Algier there, like Robinson can be used in the passing game tremendously. Obviously, uh, Mooney was an addition, and then just questions about how a new look offense is going to, you know, succeed under Zach Robinson. All those things factor into the the variability. But he sits at twenty in our rankings with upside. That's factored in without question, and um, you know the talent is there. Like if you if you guaranteed me targets. My ranking changes. If you can guarantee me enough targets. I don't know how you I don't know how you cannot guarantee that. Like that's what I don't get. This is the well, this is the Ram system coming over that plays at a faster pace, three wide receiver sets, throws the ball a lot, and he's the he's such an alpha within this you know, I, I I'll grant you that Kyle Pitts and Bijan are are going to be very involved, but that's the you know, a tight end and a running back. That in the wide receiver room, which is the primary target I, well, I, I mean, the last two years, 117 targets, 110 targets. So yeah, I mean, Arthur Smith, yeah, but running they, the ball nonstop, and I guarantee you, a conversation's been had of how do you not get? Look at this guy; he's the alpha. There's nobody else. How do you not get Drake London in the football? So it, I'm not going. I, I don't fall into the every new offensive coordinator is amazing and it always works out. That's all I'm saying. So there's a prove it aspect to this season for Drake London. Because we all said if Terry McLaurin got 160 targets, he'd be fine. We all said, that, you know, these players should be getting them. Right. I mean, you know, we waited for years for the DJ Moore breakout yeah, as took, well. Took a long time. But you're you're this season, you're going to have to go in early and you know make your claim for it. And and honestly, I know I'm sitting here saying like he should get the targets, everything should work out. I'm terrified when when I'm on the clock and he's the highest ADP and he's the next highest in my rankings. I often still don't take him because I, I it's it's hard when you're going into year three and you're saying, please break out. I mean, you have to draft him to be your one. You have to, pretty much. And so that is, that's kind of where we were with Garrett Wilson, and it didn't work out for people last year, so there's a little bit of a fear. Um, I, I'll tell you right now, I just looked left at the back wall mm -hmm. trying to see the clock for the show. <laughs> is it back there? Uh, it is not, but it's 1,200 not. shows no. told me it would be. <laughs> so I just, uh, for those uh, listening at home, Mike and I are swapped spots again um, due to my grotesque appearance. Um, Which, at, you, I'm looking at it. Yeah. I, I don't know why we didn't take into account my feelings. No, I mean, it's disrupting to the show in every regard. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gross. <laughs> How's that feel? It feels good. It feels real good. I, there ain't nothing I could do. Um 19 is Brandon Ayuk. We just talked extensively about him. The ranks are going to jump all over the place based on the trade destination. Right now he's at 19. I've got him at 16. Mike at 17. Jason at 22. Uh, this was the most efficient wide receiver last year. Um, big play guy. You know, we, we talked about if he stayed in San Francisco, some of the pitfalls of matching those efficiency numbers again because of fantasy points per target were so incredibly high and – and the big plays, but this is a, a hyper talented player about to get paid. It seems like by another team, and um, these rankings are gonna—they're just gonna move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we TBD on what, what his uh, target market share will look like and who his quarterback is. I won't ask you every—I won't ask each of you this question, but Jason, I'm real quick. You have him at 22. Is that factoring in trade rumors? No, not at all. That was as a Niner, and then. If I say a team name, I just want you to say where you think he'll end up when you restat him. Okay. I know it's not going to be fun, sure. but you're going to do it anyway. New England. Uh, 26. Pittsburgh. 
25. Cleveland. 18. So he goes up from San Francisco then. That's, four, that's, four spot. that's presuming Amari Cooper leaves, yeah. Okay. Washington. Uh, 20. Okay. All right. Just off the top of the dome. Devontae Smith at 18. I don't know why you hate him, Jason. But um, <laughs> how I've, do we have Smith ranked higher than you? I, yeah, I don't know. I gotta, I've got to go look a, a real... little deeper because I am all in on Devontae Smith this year. I love him. Mm. I think he's going to have an awesome. Mm. Honestly, mm. here, here's how you guys are higher. Outside here's how you guys are higher. Twenty. Just our numbers. Where they're higher numbers. You guys are. I got br- him at fifteen. Brilliant, smart Mike at eighteen. People, you're brilliant, smart people, and you have him uh, where he's, you know, going to finish. You've got him at fifteen, Andy, and yeah. I need to adjust him up. Um, no higher stat numbers, Al. Higher stats. Yes, that's what I meant. Um, I I mean Devonte Smith. I don't know if you saw that little you know uh, hype moment this morning of uh, Jalen Hurts completing eighty eight consecutive practice oh, yep. Yep. Uh, practice passes without an interception, which was exciting to it's exciting to hear that with a new offensive mind coming in there. But um, the storyline with Devonte Smith. Finished at wide receiver 20 last year. Missed a game. Wide receiver 10 the year before. Mike has talked so much this offseason about Jalen Waddell Mm -hmm. and the fact that Jalen Waddell, he took a little step back last year after being the wide receiver 7 and got, you know, Mike expects him to come back to form. Very similar to me with Devontae Smith. Mm -hmm. These two were darlings in last year's draft season. And um, I think part of the narrative was like they got to deliver now on this new uh, promotion. And neither of them were able to do that. But, you know, this was the wide receiver 10 in 2022. So, Jason, even though you hate him, um, why do you love him? I love him because the Eagles offense was so hard to watch last year. It really was. Like, it was – I mean, we saw it from the beginning of the year, even when they were having success. We commented on it. This isn't revisionist history where we're saying, oh, things weren't good last year. Like, their offense was bland and boring, and it worked in the beginning of the year because they have immense talent, because A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith are just awesome, and Jalen Hurts is a super capable quarterback that with his dual threat ability, you you just, you have, it's tough as a defense. However, you know, they didn't put men in motion, it was like around 10% of the time, man in motion, it was the lowest in the NFL, It and, and Kellen Moore, I know, We've had debates. Is he great? Is he not great? Whatever. He's been successful offensively for a couple of years in a row. Keenan Allen last year was phenomenal with, uh, you know, with Kellen Moore. C.D. Lamb was good with Kellen Moore uh, two years ago, and so Kellen Moore coming over, he might not be the greatest thing since sliced bread. But I know he's not a bad offensive coordinator. I know he can get the job done, and I know he's got a great amount of talent. So I'm in on the Eagles offense this this season. I I really do expect it to be closer to what it was two years ago than last year. And Devontae Smith coming into his own as a great wide receiver who can be used in the slot a little bit more, put in motion a little bit more. Let let me talk about that for a second because when you put a player in motion, you give them an advantage. Yes. (laughs) And so when you see – players that are extremely talented, prolific wide receivers, and you put them in motion. Arizona would do this with with Larry sometimes. Um, you know, CeeDee Lamb we've seen do that recently. What well, I mean, Tyreek is – Tyreek is always moving. Which they have uh, – did you guys see that they're at least – Trying. Yeah. They're, uh, the, a focus for the refs will be what they're calling a cheating motion or, or something like that. Which Upfield. Where – Arena ball. Yeah, like, you have, I mean, if you're watching the game, it definitely happens of Tyreek will be running laterally and he'll turn upfield just before the snap. And you're like, how are we How are we not calling this a penalty? It, it certainly is. So we'll see if that affects You should anything. be able to keep your torso straight and your and your bottom half can move. Okay. That'd be really fun to watch. So you're like you're you're facing yeah. as long as your torso is facing horizontal, you can turn your legs. <laughs> okay, I that's know. What, you're saying. that's we, what I'm saying. Can we make it just the helmet? You know what I mean? Because that's oh, that's even better. A, a little bit easier, but you, so you could be running forward, but you got to be looking back. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, it, it sets people up for an advantage, and this is something that I expect both AJ Brown and um, Devontae Smith to be moved around more. You you have uh, the Eagles cornerback, Devontae Maddox, said he noticed the Eagles wide receivers lining up at different spots more often, said he's seen more Devontae Smith in the slot than he's used to seeing. Devontae Smith 
in college at Alabama was an unbelievable player in the slot. 5.4 or 5.5 yards per route run uh, during his Heisman year from the slot. All right, Smith at 18, 17, DK Metcalf coming in. He's one of those players where, Jason, your, your ranking is extremely high compared to Mike and I, but his ADP to me is basically his floor. Uh, Mike and I have him ranked at his ADP right now, but when you look at a, you know, you talk about kind of an inverse Drake London situation in your draft, mm -hmm. which is Drake London, you are, you're forced into him being a wide receiver one. You're, you're having to make a bet that has to pay off. Whereas Metcalf, I feel like if you draft him in ADP, you might be drafting a wide receiver one. Where, he, where's his ADP wide receiver? What? 22. Okay. He's, so, I mean, he, he is a... He's never finished that low since his rookie year. Yes. Which, <laughs> he, wide receiver like, 7, now, wide receiver 12, wide receiver 18, wide receiver 16. 16 last year. Like, last year was, uh, like, I think the the, the 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 group memory of Seattle was, it was a, it was bad. Like, mm -hmm. it was, it, it, they did not come through for fantasy football. And yet, he was the wide receiver 16 in I did, 16 games played. Did have a little fear with the Geno Smith injury news. He is back at practice. But it would mean something if he was not there. Uh, Metcalf is one of the value picks of the year. Yes. He's in the UK uh, yeah, he's as a, he's a value. And he is there, you know, from a physicality. You know, you look at the red zone report in the UDK. Uh, he was one of the leaders in red zone targets, not necessarily completing them all into touchdowns, but that those numbers come back to form. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you look at, uh, Marvin Eloquin, one of our great writers, uh, he did this study on what season each position kind of peaks. Historically, year five and six compared to others have the highest ceiling for fantasy points at wide receiver. This is this is DK going into year six. This is a player in his prime. Also, the Ryan Grubb offense coming from the University of Washington, that was the one that featured Roma Dunze so well. And the comps aren't just like me saying it. Ryan Grubb has literally talked about the the similarities between the, having one of those Odunze like players in DK Metcalf. So I, I I think we can be confident that he's the center number one piece of the offense, and we know the talent. So to me, I, you know, wide receiver ten that's pretty high. That's going to be touchdowns, right? If he if he gets the touchdowns, he can finish there. If he doesn't, he won't. But he gets so much red zone work, and he's got the body for it, and he's done it before. And he's being drafted as a wide receiver twenty two. He's just a he's a layup to me at, at the, ADP right now. The big now. challenge was last year he only had six percent great games as yes. we define them in the consistency charts. And out of his eight touchdowns, three came in that Dallas game. So then you're talking about breaking up fifteen weeks with five touchdowns. So yes, it is gonna come down to touchdowns and some more consistency if you're happy with that pick. Um but he is he's capable and set up to do it, and your confidence in Grubb uh leans that direction. At number 16, Cooper Cup is sitting at 16. Uh, his ADP right now yeah, is the wide receiver now. 23. I am worried about the ADP. Just jettisoning. Jettisoning? Jettisoning? Jet, 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 jettisoning. Jettisoning. <laughs> Jettisonal? Jettisonally rising. There, yes, Jettisonally there rising. Yes. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, because we do this and we definitely do this with players that have been, you know, multi time top receivers in the game. And, uh, at his current wide receiver 23, I'm all over it. Uh, I want Cooper cup on every team. This, the Puka panic, the Puka panic is interesting. Um, because he's hurt. He's week to week right now right, with a knee injury, and there's been reports out of camp that the offense is running through Cooper Cup already, and so, you know, he's he's on a mission, he's back to full health. You can be all those things and be 31 and still get hurt, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. However, like, if you go back and you look at the history of Puka Nakua, he has struggled with injuries as well. Yeah. And so those injury struggles going back to high school and college, like, are – they're hanging out there as – Maybe Cooper Cup can be the guy this entire year. The defense looks like it has weakened for the Rams, more throwing the football. Um, 
McVay knows how to get the ball to Cooper Cup. This is we've seen this. The recipe is out there. They've cooked the dish and it's delicious when it when it's made right. So we've spent you know some time lately talking about is this just a situation where we're all excited for Puka? I don't. Mm -hmm. That's okay. You be excited for Koopa or uh, Koopa <laughs> Koopa for Puka. For Koopa Troopa. Uh, <laughs> yeah, do not, Koopa. Don't be excited for Koopa. That's a, that's a bad tortoise. But we were like, well, at the end of the year, are we going to look back and go, oh, yeah, Cooper Cup is very good at football, and he has a very strong connection with Matthew Stafford, and these guys are still here, and are we just – are we letting the new the, – the excitement for one player diminish our excitement for another guy, which we should – we should be excited for both of them. And it's like – and Puka has been up here at the, the one-two turn, and Cooper Cup has been – like a what, like a late three or a fourth round guy, and it's just it's it's imbalanced. It I shouldn't don't, be there. I don't believe that a healthy Puka Nakua is a better player than a healthy Cooper Cup today. Okay. I don't know if I believe that or not. I really don't. I it, it's 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 tough because obviously Cooper Cup's his his pinnacle is is an all timer. You know he's a he's a, a triple crown winner. He's done things that very few other wide receivers have ever done. Um, but, man alive, Puka is so physical. So, I mean, as a rookie coming on and doing what he did, I, I, I think they're about even. When you look at the decision, Mike, of staring down the Drake London Cooper Cup and who you want to slot in as right. a wide receiver one for how you're constructing your roster – Oh my goodness, that's a good question. Because those those guys, I mean, you're gonna have to Drake. You're gonna have to Drake. You're gonna have to draft London. We're doing real well. Yeah. yeah Morning seriously. recordings are going good. I'm staring at the back wall. Um, talking about King Koopa. Yeah, I mean, obviously these two players could be much closer in ADP by the time draft day hits. Is all I'm saying. They I, definitely I think will. They will be. They they 100. And we're not helping the case today. I'm but, really hoping Puka slides though. That like sure. Yeah, that could happen. Because I, I, I like Puka. But what what's your what's your uh, Where do I want to take him? No, what's your things to remember going I into know. the Don't <laughs> buy the injury dip. Like when the Don't when, buy the injury dip. It never works. When they're hurt going into the beginning of the season, like we've been here with Coop ironically, Cooper Cup was that guy. Yeah. Right? And then he ended up what, missing five weeks? Uh he, yeah, he to start uh, the year. And then Puka took Last over. year he got put on uh the Could you IR. imagine could you imagine? Like, play this out. Puka should be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's what it's told. It's a week-to-week -week thing. It's not serious. He should be fine. That's the assumption. Let's just say week one, just week one, Puka misses. If Puka misses week one, Cooper Cup is going to be the best draft Versus pick out Detroit. I mean, Cooper Cup's going to have a billion fantasy points week one. His value will never be higher. Um, well, know. he plays Arizona week two, so it could be – could be, it, could it, be. It might be even higher on week two. Man. <laughs> I, I'm like, uh, yeah. All right, Jalen Waddle at 15, Mike. You moving him up right now, Jay? Uh, I don't. I I want to. I want to keep him where he is. <laughs> Let him be there on draft day. Waddle at 15. Yes. Uh, Mike, you're the highest of the three of us right now. Our consensus rank is 15. You talked him up on the Ice and Fire episode. If you want to hear a huge uh, Waddle breakdown, you can go listen to the. Ice and Fire show that was a fun one. You should listen to it. This yeah. is good. Yeah, the really we I, I'm not the gonna episode, do the, not Mike's take. Well, thank you. Yeah, uh, so I'm not going to do the entire breakdown uh, here, but it's the the condensed version is essentially these two players talking about Tyreek and Jalen Waddle. They have already had success together. Where Jalen Waddle was the wide receiver seven in 2022. So this is not a both guys can't eat in this offense. Yes, they can. Tua led the league last year in passing yards. He's going to contend to lead the league again in passing yards. And, yeah, Tyreek has a lot to do with it, but so does Jalen Waddle, who is absolutely – Jay, you just talked about uh, – uh, we, we're looking for players who can beat zone. Mm -hmm. Jalen Waddle dominates at that part of, of – that aspect of offense. And last year it was just really bad injury luck, not only just missing games, but – getting hurt mid-game, fighting through it. And I think that he 
can easily bounce back, and the ADP this year is nowhere close to the risk that you invested last year. The price is what ma- – yeah, last year I did draft him as a top-10 wide receiver. There's still an aspect to Waddle's game. I'm the lowest of the three of us. That reminds me of you know, Pickens last year where if you get that big play, you're – you're like, this is one of the best players in the game and you're going to win me a week, but if you don't get it, like, that's the concern. I, uh, which I get that. It is just, to me, the player, Jalen Waddle, what we've seen now over he, he three, years. three years, yeah. but like he can be whatever the offense needs him to be. That year one, it was, you know, like it, he was absolutely peppered with targets. He was just, he was a PPR machine. And then... And then, well, well, now we're big plays. And so it's just, I think that he is so well-rounded that going into year four, I think we're hitting ceiling. I'm a little lower on him than 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 you are, Mike. I know you're bullish, and it is really the consistency aspect. I mean, yep. I, I've I've had him on my roster. I've had a lot of shares of, of Waddle, and you just don't get the really good games as often as you want. You get great games, you know, week winning weeks, but... I, I just wish he was more consistent, and I'm worried that it's his play style that it will that he will be consistently inconsistent going forward, even if he finishes well. But All right, there, my argument for that is sure. I mean, like I, I can't argue against that because that's what's happened. But no, you said you had an argument. But the the counterpoint is guys in that range can't give you the week winning weeks that Jalen Waddle can't. Yeah, it, yes, not it won't be every single week. I'll pad in some – I'll find consistency later. I'm taking Jalen Waddle as my wide receiver too. Yeah, but what about Waddle or Cup? Uh, between the two of them, I would take Jalen Waddle. All right, we'll take a break. Come back with another player Mike has fallen in love with all summer long. All right, I don't know – I don't know if there's a guy that – Mike needs to buy a jersey of more than <laughs> than number fourteen on our consensus wide receiver rankings list. Oh, Jalen Waddle's on the wall though. Nico like Nico Collins, last year's wide receiver nine, got paid like a number one, three year, seventy two million dollar extension. Uh, fantasy managers out there pricing him, uh, you know, where they think this future with C.J. Stroud is headed. He's a wide receiver fourteen in ADP. I'm a little lower than that. Jason's a little lower than that. Mike's a little bit higher. 35 receptions of 15-plus yards. That's Boom. tied for the fifth most in the league. C.J. Stroud was so good at extending plays and finding Nico Collins. I like the boom, Mike. Um, he was also the only wide receiver in the NFL to catch every 15-plus yard catchable target, according to Warren Sharp. So I, I give you those numbers to kind of illustrate this is a really good player, not necessarily just a really lucky season. Right. It, it, for me, Nico Collins is... If C.J. Stroud is who we think he is and who, who what fantasy players think he is, drafting him as a top-five guy, Nico's the number one. Nico was the number one for this team. Then they paid him like he's the number one for this team. I don't care about Stephon Diggs coming into town. Stephon Diggs will help the offense. Maybe we have more scoring opportunities here for Nico. But he, the fact that they immediately started treating him with their actions of this is our guy. This is absolutely our number one guy. And CJ Stroud's play style is at least last year was not, not look, don't panic. Don't check it down. Stay poised and wait for Nico and Collins don't, and don't run. And yeah, and that's not part of Stroud's game. It's wait for, for Nico Collins. If I get, if I can wait a half a second more or just a fraction, I believe that my guy is going to be open downfield. And that happened over and over and over again. And you, you, he missed two games. Yeah, it, with, as the calf, well. with the calf issue. So that kind of, you know, he finished inside the top 10 and he missed two games. Yes, he did. There's also, um, you know, there were glimpses of the offense of what it could be when a third wide receiver was good. And so I think that's why they brought in Stephon Diggs. Noah Brown's not a very great wide receiver. He's, he's a He's a – journeyman he, he, yeah he's a journeyman and 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 when he had his big games I mean you remember six for 153 and a touchdown seven for 172 he I think this offense can work with three wide receivers succeeding if there are three good wide receivers I'm, but I, I've been rising on Nico 
more and more. I I was the 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 slow the slowest to come to terms with Nico being a very good wide receiver. I, was, I just didn't believe it. I was really disappointed. <laughs> I was about to say that Kyle has not found clips of me talking in previous off seasons of my belief about Nico Collins in that offense back when it was Davis Mills and no mm -hmm. there were no weapons to get him the football, but he had that look, and it was neat to see him, you know, take a huge step forward. Um. And, and, and maybe we don't let the multiple options in the offense, you know, get in the way of drafting the best player. I'm trying to force my bell curve a little bit ahead because I do think three, four years from now we're going to look back and be like, yeah, he had a he had a third year breakout. It was it was a little later than what we're used to, but then he was just a star from then on out, and he's paid like a star now. And it's this is not an anti Tank Dell take or like, podcast. Yeah, I I think that Tank Dell is. It, Tank Dell. Do we like AJ Brown and Devontae Smith? Yep. Right. Do we like Chase and Higgins? Do we like Waddle and Tyreek? Yes. And you know, so it's like Tank Dell probably represents an even greater value just and Puka. of where his ADP is and where I think that Tank Dell is going to finish. But it's uh, do the the contract extension is it speaks so loud to me of this was a team looking at all these looking at the wide receiver landscape. And like what's going on with CeeDee Lamb and Jamar Chase. It's, it's these guys who have now put up multiple huge seasons and they're saying, No, I'm not gonna I'm not playing until you open the bank for me. And they got out ahead of that. You know, like it, it was a it's a fair move for Nico, fifty two million guaranteed. He secures a generational wealth. But like he could have waited. Like if if Nico has well, it's like an, DJ Moore in Chicago. If Nico the same has thing. another great year, yeah. if like if he has a year anywhere close to what he put up last year, this year, that salary is money. is jettisoning yeah. <laughs> to the stratosphere. <laughs> so they they got out in front of it, and I commend them for it. Um, this just in: the Texans have traded for wide receiver Brandon Ayuk <laughs> to add to the three pack. That's so, fine. No, that is that's false news, fake news. Maybe, maybe it'll happen. Probably won't happen. Mike Evans at 13. Mike Evans last year was uh, was incredible. A revelation, a league winner, an unbelievable value, and one of your my guys. It was very, very special uh, to see him play. I mean, 17 weeks, wide receiver five, crushed as a 30-year-old, got paid. Um, you know, we do have a change in offensive coordinator, but – like, again, this is the point I made last offseason with Mike Evans. I will not make it forever, but maybe I will. Nobody has seen more change. Nobody is quarterback, head coach, offensive coordinator, all of it, than Mike Evans. And this is a player that from 2014, wide receiver 12, 24, 2, 18, 8, 12, 10, 8, 16, 5. Some I mean, say he's the first ballot Hall of Famer. Some would, and he's wide receiver 15. So you're not paying – like, think about the season Waddle had two years ago, and then he goes up and he's ADP 9. Then you look at the season that Mike Evans had, two spots higher last year than where Waddle had finished when he got moved up to 9, and the, the age keeps him at wide receiver 15. I think it's a very fair price. It's a basically where we all have him ranked. I think and I don't think there's you, you need to go into it more than that. No, I, th I think it's a, a fair price. The only concern is touchdowns. And it's not that Mike Evans has not been a touchdown machine. If you look at you know the last four seasons, 13 this previous season, six in his down season the year before, 14 the year before that, 13 the year before that. But those were Brady. And then it was a matter of do you believe Baker can get him to double-digit touchdowns? You did, Andy. You made that case. I didn't. Um, and, and he did, he got 13. Now can Baker do it again? <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like the, the, the question is, st it's still Baker, um, uh, of whether Baker can provide Mike Evans with double digit, double digit touchdowns. Cause I think he's going to need to be around there since he's Just not give me eight, I eight, think you'll eight be... will make me content in ADP anything higher than eight. We're going to beat it. That's that's about my line. Okay. And he's at eight. He had six in 2022, and that knocked him to th – think about that. Wide receiver 16 missed two games 
and only scored six touchdowns and ended yeah. at 16, and his ADP is twenty is 15. Yeah, but I remember that season. He, he No, that one was that, pain. That, that one was, was pain. pure pain, and most of his points came yep. in that beautiful week 17. Yeah, but again, look, the case for Evans is so much stronger than the case for DK Metcalf right now. That, that I would I, I mean it's just so much stronger. I don't think that's true. I mean that that blows my mind. What? Oh, I'm Why just saying, are you just a Mike Evans this hater? Is, all the no, 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 no. I'm not a Mike Evans hey, hater. I'm just saying ten years a of dominance. A 26 year old versus a 30 year old. And are, are you saying that Baker is significantly better than Geno? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying Mike. Well, one, Mike Evans is better Mike than Evans DK is better Metcalf. DK. Yes, Two, that's true. Mike Evans has proven it over time with lots of different quarterbacks. And uh, no, I would I would take Metcalf behind Evans every day of the week. Okay. Um, Chris Olave. Chris Olave is uh, quite interesting. He's at 12 in our consensus. He's at 8 on my ranks. I was staring this down with Jason in the morning yesterday going, Jason, I've got Olave at 8, and I don't know what to do with these feelings. Mike's got him at 19. Yeah. Because he hurt me, guys. Jason at eleven. Is that emotional? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. It hopefully it's not, but Chris Olave. He should. I don't like my ranking. He here. should dominate this he sh season. He should. So he should have dominated last year. Yeah, and he kind of did. Kind of. He kind of did. It, it was the lows were really low with Olave, but he's the number one read in this offense. Mike Thomas is gone. Um Olave is going to hold up everything they do in the passing game. Derek Carter, take it for what you will. It ain't it ain't coffee with Cooper Cup. But Derek Carr has spent extensive time this offseason, extra routes, extra reps, after practice with Chris Olave to get on the same page. And Olave is just too talented, I think. Um, there was a very funny Chris Olave interview where they're like, did yeah. you see anything this training camp so far? I thought it was like, what play? They're like, have you seen any plays that made you just say, yeah, we're going to be a really good team? And he's like, nah. <laughs> Which is not <laughs> the answer yes. you want to give. Yeah, that was that was pretty funny. Um, So, to me, to me, there's a lot of upside. You talk about upside in the UDK. Potential, explo uh, you know, explosive season waiting to happen. And um, even Nick Underhill, who we love, came out and said the connection looks really good in the preseason. It's just a matter of delivering on the promise. And, again, it's going to come down to touchdowns for Olave, too, yeah, the, where he just didn't get the big plays into the end zone last year, and that really hurt him. But he still ended up in the top 20. That's that's a hard part of what happened last year was there was a lot of there was a lot of good games. We, we never had that one moment where, like, you go into Monday and everyone is talking about, did you see what Chris Olave did yesterday on the football field? We got uh, like his best game. Let's see, 123. So wide receiver 12, nine for 123 against the the Rams, and like as in terms of yardage, you know he he ranked higher than that when he would have scored a touchdown. But it's we didn't have that 120 and two mm -hmm. or like the, and that's I mean that's a very high bar. I'm not. <laughs> not saying that that's an easy thing to do it's a matter of true number ones do that at least a couple times a year yeah and I, we haven't we, we haven't gotten there yet I do think we'll get there I believe the best Chris Olave season has not been seen yet right I don't think he's peaked in his career and he is not valued the same as Garrett Wilson and Drake London like you know I I think he is seen as kind of the third if you compare Chris Olave to Garrett Wilson, I think everyone says Garrett Wilson is is better. You know, is, is he's drafted higher. He should be better. So, I just want to play a little game. Oh. I want to play a game. Let's hear it. This game's called Chris Olave or Garrett Wilson. Okay. Well, let's start. I was really hoping that was the name of the game. <laughs> let's, let's just start with games. Who's played more games? They came into the you know same time of the career. Mm, this is just trying this to give a, one to this Garrett. This is a dumb question. It's trying to give one it's to Garrett a, Wilson real quick. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson has three more games yeah, played. Yeah, all right. Who has more targets in their games? Garrett Wilson. Yeah, I'll go Garrett Wilson. Yeah, it is Garrett Wilson. He's yeah. got yeah. Yeah. So you know, 315 mm -hmm. targets versus he's Chris laying, Olave is at only at 257. He's laying the sticks across the hole, Mike. Mm -hmm. He's, he's shuffling some. You ready to walk? <laughs> go get that meat hanging from the tree branch. All right. 
Uh, let's just look at the advanced the, ad gross. the advanced <laughs> metrics. Okay. I don't think I will. Targets per route run and yards per route run. Those, you know, who who okay, it's gotta be, I think it's Olave. Targets. Uh targets I'm gonna go Wilson. Wilson. Yards I'll go Olave. Both of them are Chris Olave ahead. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. Who has more top twelve fantasy finishes? Higher percentage of yeah, top twelve this, fantasy finishes. I think I've been down this road before. I think Olave's got that. It yeah. is Olave. Yeah. Who has a higher percentage of top twenty four finishes? It is Olave. Yeah. Who has more total yards? Okay. Olave. It is Olave. That, Who has more total one's, touchdowns? That one's pretty interesting. Olave. Yeah. So it's like yeah. he's he's just not given. I don't, I just I don't think he's given the respect he deserves. He's been somehow a disappointment, even though he's been really really well, good. When you are when you have basement quarterback in yes. New York, and you have mid quarterback in New Orleans. The grace has not been given to Olave with mid as it has been with like Garrett Wilson gets a free pass. Like, yeah, because of the other Wilson. Yeah. Put Derek Carr on the New York Jets last year. That team makes the playoffs. Yes. Certainly. Oh yeah. That, yeah. That, and Garrett Wilson doesn't So I mean, I get uh, I like Chris Olave a lot. I I was the one you know just last off season of that exact thing same thing of I don't think the gap between Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave should be as big as it is. The problem is is his ADP is the wide receiver 12. If it was 20 you're talking my guy contention. Right. Sure. But 12 is like, that's not a floor for him. So there's risk. Mm -hmm. There's a little Can, bit of the Drake London risk. So there. he's being drafted as a top 12 guy. Can Chris Olave finish top five? Such a good question. No. I don't think so either. And for the and record, so I do think Garrett Wilson to, can. 12 to six. Right? Yeah. That, that's the hard part about the ADP. Marvin Harrison is the last name we'll talk about today. Comes in at 11. Uh, his ADP is nine, guys. We are officially not homers. <laughs> did you did you realize that? You're welcome. We are wide receiver 11. Uh, also, I, I had made some adjustments earlier in the week. He was at eight. He's at 10 for me. Mike at 11. Jason at 15. All three of us slightly below ADP. As much as I believe, in the clear path to not busting that exists for Harrison, which I do believe, it is still a just, it is the, the highest sticker price on the lot, mm -hmm. right? Like you you are not waiting for rates to come down. No. <laughs> you want it. You want it bad and you want it now. This and is it's not a family car. It's exciting. It's flashy. It's a two-seater. This, this is for dad only. <laughs> this is a two-seater. And uh, you know, Al, you ain't putting on the seatbelt. <laughs> no, that's so, premium, premium gasoline in there. Yes. Yeah, so you are paying. You are paying the highest price to have the sexiest vehicle, <laughs> and <laughs> it will be probably pretty fun. I really do think it's going to be a great year. But there's going to be some times you're going to be like, man, I wish I had a back seat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It, there, it could be. Groceries don't fit in here. I should not have left the roof off. And it's if, raining. And if Kyler Murray goes down, enjoy Desmond Ritter supplying Marvin Harrison with with fantasy value. Um, this question is like the one you just asked. It's the best question about Marvin for the ADP, which is wide receiver nine, a mid-second round pick. The highest he can finish in year one is what? He, he can be a top five guy. I do believe that a Jamar Chase rookie season is yeah. possible. It Where was is, Chase as a rookie? He what was the finish? Six. Wide receiver. I believe it was six. wide receiver six. Um, uh, wide receiver five. Beep, beep, boop, beep, 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 five. Beep, beep. Okay. In a, in a half point. You're way off, Jay. Form, he put up 81 for near, for over 1,400 yards and 13 touchdowns. Now, the, the 13 touchdowns is doing some real heavy lifting there. But okay. Puka it, like, was four. It's So, four, five? It is that is, what you think? Yes, it, it is absolutely possible. It is a it is a cheek clenching pick to take a rookie, the highest drafted rookie of all time for fantasy football. And uh, like his margin for error is so low. Yeah, there's the the emotional cost of Marvin Harrison. If Marv goes out week one and gives you seven for forty five or something like that. You you are going to panic in the streets. Let me let me give a draft strategy thought okay. with Marvin Harrison. Um, there are a lot of wide receivers going in the first round, right? Mm -hmm. You guys just did a mock draft, 
and somehow Mike ended up with Bijan at nine because the big name wide receivers are going and going early. Which means that on that turn, for a lot of you, it's do you want to grab your running back or do you want to grab a second wide receiver in Marv? The price for Malik Neighbors is two rounds later. And Malik Neighbors is really, really good. He is. And there's not the risk attached. Not that there's huge risk with Harrison as a floor play, but you're waiting for your running back and then until, you know, your 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 draft strategy is going to have to become you know, third round, fourth round running backs. It's just something a little bit scary where he's going strategically. Now, if you go running back early, you've got to make then Marv's your number one. So you've got to go Gibbs or Kyron, and then you got to come back and say, Marvin's my number one wide receiver. And uh, I think I'm I'm more okay with that than I am with Waddle or Drake London. But it's still a little bit scary. It is. It is. You know, obviously we haven't seen him on the NFL field, but there hasn't been a prospect like him in a long, long time. He is as perfect a prospect as you can be he has the height the speed the ball skills the pedigree the heritage I mean he's got it all he's the clear one for his depth chart with no real competition it's been from day one here in Arizona he is the alpha wide receiver for the team and he's got a good quarterback in Kyler who has been able to support uh you know fantasy success in the past yeah Hopkins was his first year here now Hopkins was a superstar at the time of course but DeAndre Hopkins, year one in Arizona, was the number five overall fantasy wide receiver. Yeah, so, I, I mean, it, it's tough because I could see a world where you are disappointed, and it is a bust of a pick this year. He's not going to be a bust of a of a player, but if he goes out and has five touchdowns and, you know, his line in, um, you know, a lot of sports books is right around 1,000 yards. If he goes out and gets 1,000 yards on the dot and six touchdowns, you're going to be fail. super yeah. disappointed with this draft slot. Um, I, but the, the truth is, we talk about Chris Olave does not have the potential to be top five. I do think Marvin Harrison does. And so that's why you're you're making decisions basically between those type of players. I think the floor is higher for a Chris Olave than it is for a rookie Marvin Harrison. I think the ceiling is higher for Marvin Harrison. So it's just mm, like, what tough. is what is the way you want to play? Well, that'll do it for today's episode. We're coming back with the top 10 wide receivers on tomorrow's show. Reminder to hit that follow button on all your podcast players. Leave us a review if you've got a couple of extra minutes. It helps the show out as we bring you five episodes a week. And um, that's it. We thank you, Foot Clan. We love you. Camera's over there. <laughs> Wall is over there. Yeah, it's where it always is. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.